Hello, my name is Steven Ellsberg, and I'm here with uh, representing the Associate Student Government at Classic Community College, uh, bringing you a Wellness Minute, uh, which is where we take some time to sit down with an expert in uh, a health and wellness area. And today we have with us Amy Magnuson. Amy has a master's in social work from Portland State and is a clinical uh, social work associate um, working towards licensure as a clinical social worker. And she's an advisor with the TRIO program at Clatsop Community College. And uh, yeah, she's been uh, working here for a while. So uh, Amy, it's great to have you with us. Um, with, with, uh, with all the things that have been happening um, with the pandemic and the current um, uh, atmosphere, how have you been experiencing um, everything that has been, been happening? How has it been affecting your life? Yeah, thanks for having me, Stephen. Um, it's changed everything. <laughs> um, I usually work in person with students, and um, now I'm working online, and that's um, been a big learning curve for the students, for myself, for our faculty. Um, and I found that I really miss that, you know, like individual connection, as well as sort of the natural social social cues we get when we're in person with each other. <laughs> you know, e email is a little bit different, and even Zoom is a little bit different. So I'm glad that we can virtually connect, but it, um, I miss the in-person, you know, interaction. Yeah. I 100% uh, fall in line with with that uh, with that view. Um, uh, what what are some things that uh, you might be able to uh, bring to the table as far as like I'm sure that I mean I feel very similar in in, in dealing with a lot of the the problems that have been arising with um, the current atmosphere. Uh, are do you have some uh, what what do you have to to bring to the table to be able to help? Yeah, well, I, I guess um, the COVID-19 kind of um, environment has offered me some, uh, an opportunity to really think a little bit more about um, my personal relationship with stress <laughs> and, um, and caused me to, to um, kind of, you know, like I have, I have built up some knowledge over time through my educational experiences and in working with students, but um, it's given me an opportunity to really apply it individually um, and to think more about how um, how that information might be helpful to others. So um, I'm here today to talk a little bit about stress, how we experience it, and, and some tools that we might use to manage our stress. Great. Well, I know that uh, I've been dealing with all sorts of stress in my life, so I'm excited to hear, yeah, so what, what, what happens? So when you have stress come in, um, which we all do in all sorts of different ways, some real, some perceived, um, what does it do? Yeah, stress is fascinating when you start learning more about it. There's a lot of theories around stress. Um, one of the more prevalent ones is that um, it's a remnant of our evolution. Um, and, uh, and that really kind of blew my mind. I'm going to explain a little bit more kind of why. But thinking about it as this stress is a tool that's helped us survive um, over the millennium. And uh, initially our stress response was really to protect us to keep us safe um, and so that that for me it um, kind of helped change my relationship with thinking about stress um, so if you think about when we uh, were uh, living you know on the savannah in Africa our uh, as part of the food chain right we we, um, we needed um, to be aware of danger uh, our stressors were more acute in nature so if we were unable to detect danger or sense danger, you know, like a saber-toothed tiger is creeping up and we don't, we don't respond, we're not passing our genes down. <laughs> so right. you and I would not, would not be here. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so this, this sort of stress response, this physiological experience that we have is really rooted in our genetic history. Um, and that, you know, when you think about stress, uh, I think we think about the sort of cognitive aspects of it, but it's a really a physiological response. We don't choose it. It, it actually is stimulated by an external um, sort of threat. Um, right. And so, you, you know, your heart race, races, you respirate faster. It's preparing you for this fight, flight, or freeze. 
sort of response. Um, and so, so that kind of, I think, that piece of it, like, hey, my brain has been evo has, has evolved with this tool to keep me alive, and the reason I'm here in part is because of it, um, is, is helpful information. Now, fast forward to 2020, we live in a very different society. Our stressors mm -hmm. are less acute and more, um, uh, uh, more, work, more related to our work, um, our relationships, whether or not we can pay rent. You know, like all of these things are happening on a, on a, they're, as a more, they're less acute and more um, kind of regular. Uh, and, right. It's like a and consistent saber tooth tiger, a metaphorical one that's slowly creeping on us all the time. Right. And yet we're still functioning on this software <laughs> that developed <laughs> to keep us alive, you know, uh, from predators. And while it has evolved over time and our brain has developed and gotten bigger and heavier, um, we are still like utilizing this old system to, to sort of navigate stress. So I think that's a really interesting kind of part of it to, to be aware of is like right. you can both thank your stress for keeping you here and actually giving you the opportunity to be alive and recognize that um, in order to um, Sort of change your relationship if stress for you is, is a negative thing it requires us to take some action um right. and kind of just a piece connected to that is sort of the recognition that stress is not inherently a negative thing when you think about you know doing really well in a job interview or nailing that speech for your class um you felt stress and that helped you perform at your optimal peak performance so so harnessing it um, can really be advantageous to us. It's more so when it, it um, overtakes us, it becomes cro a chronic experience that we really um, suffer from right. stress. You hear a lot of things about stress management, right? And so mm -hmm. to be able to see it as a positive thing, so maybe much like food, where some food is, is you know, good if you eat it in this amount, but if you eat too much of it, then it, then it becomes a bad thing. Stress is maybe a little bit the same. Yeah, it's not intended to eliminate, you know, like our goal is not to eliminate all of our stress, but yeah, right. to harness it in a way that helps us as opposed to hurts us and to kind of give us a certain amount of um, ability to manage the levels of stress that we navigate. Great. And so is there a way to, to maybe manage and have a healthy diet of, of stress using food as our analogy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there are... Um, there are a lot of different things we can do to manage our stress. Um, and one of the sort of um, tools that I like to utilize is thinking broadly. Um, mm. You know, not everybody necessarily is going to sit down and meditate uh, every day, but everybody is eating every day. And so thinking about what you're eating, um, everyone is probably – uh, maybe not right now, but most of us are interacting with others, whether it's in our household or virtually, um, we're connecting. So connection to others is, is actually a stress management tool. It reduces mm. our stress by allowing us to share our experiences with others. Um, exercise. Exercise is, is a is, can be a very advantageous stress management tool. It actually... Um, builds our cognitive development. It, it actually improves our memory. It um, improves our endurance for tasks. Um, and, and it improves our level of sort of happiness. So most people have experienced some kind of physical fitness where they've afterwards been like, oh my God, I feel like I'm like flying on a cloud. That's <laughs> sort of like the benefit of the, the work that you're putting in. Um, and that yeah. over time, uh, definitely can improve uh, and, and, and help you manage your stress. Um, uh, it's, been, it's been interesting seeing how uh, different types of social networking and mm -hmm. things like Zoom and things like uh, different ways of people being able to connect have kind of popped up over. And, it's, it's, those are, and those are ways of you're actually doing something good for yourself in those by uh, managing your stress. Yeah, we're so creative <laughs> as humans. And it's amazing we have this technology that has allowed us to stay connected during this pandemic. It's been, I mean, as much as um, it can be a pain sometimes to have to log in and get online, it also really brings us um, an ability to stay connected, which is helpful. Yeah. 
Um, some other areas that I'd like to mention is um, playtime. So having time to do things you're interested in and that excite you um, is a stress management strategy. Um, having focus time, and, and for a lot of students, this can be focusing on your studies, like having, have, developing goals um, mm -hmm. and setting goals is, a, is an aspect of managing um, stress. Um, meditation is something a lot of people have heard about, and mindfulness. Mm -hmm. Um, and that can also be a helpful tool. I think for a lot of people, um, myself included, like it's sort of like, oh, such a commitment. And do I have to sit on the floor with my legs crossed for an hour? Right. You know, you don't. There's a lot of like just taking 10 minutes a day um, mm -hmm. to sit and, um, and let the thoughts come and go. And mindfulness is sort of the concept of living in the present moment non-judgmentally. So the idea that we are um, kind of like sitting by a stream and watching our thoughts go by and not jumping in to stop them or grab them, um, but letting them sort of just wander through. So we're observing them, we're interacting with them, but we're not um, hindering them. We're just sort of with them. Um, right. That can be a helpful tool. Um, another aspect that a lot of college students um, lose out on is quality sleep. Um, mm. That's huge. Um, sleep time is really critical, and a lot of the research indicates that like seven hours is really um, optimal for folks. Right. I know when people are really struggling with stress, sleep can be challenging. Um, yeah. And so there are a lot of um, uh, virtual tools um, that I'm hoping we can link to the video later that um, provide sleep support through, um, you know, like guided relaxation techniques, that kind of thing. Um, right. I've discovered a lot of good ones that I have found to be really helpful. Um, and then the, the last area is sort of just um, taking downtime, like not having scheduled time or having to think about what you're doing, just letting your mind wander, um, do, do whatever it wants. Um, you know, like we're, 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 um, we're complex people and we need a variety of things. You know, like our lives need, our days need to be um, changing. Um, in different right. ways. Um, so I'm really m kind of maintaining uh, time for ourselves, which I know can be really hard for students that have kids home right now. Um, I know some of my students are still working, you know, so like mm -hmm. that can be a challenge, but thinking about creative ways, like maybe it's in your car, driving to work, or mm -hmm. um, in the bathtub, <laughs> um, <laughs> finding ways to kind of preserve some time for you to just take it easy. And to get creative, like you said. And I think another aspect um, maybe that plays along with this is, is you know, uh, maybe not being so hard on yourself. If, uh, you know, and then taking, maybe using that to take that time to relax and seeing that as a space, like you said, that space is you're actually working on yourself that's going to help you in dealing with those stresses. Absolutely, yeah. I think one of the really critical things is to be kind to yourself. And recognize that y this is not normal. What we're experiencing as, as a collective world community is, is not average. It's, we should be feeling off. <laughs> we should yeah. be, you know, like having really challenging days, like, because this is not the norm. So really recognizing some, some days you're not going to get everything done. And that's mm -hmm. okay. That's just where we are right now. Um, uh, right. The, you know, so I think, yeah, being kind to yourself and, 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 Reminding yourself you're doing, mm -hmm. you're, you're doing, you're taking steps by doing any of those things that I mentioned, you're taking steps that are um, supportive of your wellness. And, and maybe, uh, would you say maybe taking one, one of those things out of, 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 the, of the group and really maybe concentrating on one of those and spending maybe five minutes uh, this week in, uh, in devoting that five minutes to say play or exercise to change to maybe start a, a new habit might be a good first step for somebody trying to uh, to make a change. Yeah, 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 and I think that's the kind of key thing here is just knowing that we need to like that there are things we can do it doesn't change our stress. Actually implementing them and um, and what can be helpful because creating new routines is um, hard, and on average it takes sixty six days. <laughs> and that's the average. Some people take right. much longer than that. So recognizing habits, forming habits is hard. Um, 
but if uh, if we can take you know like uh, incremental steps towards those habits, maybe tying them to activities we're already doing um, or times of the day, that can be a really helpful way to help um, support your your changing. You know, if you're making some changes to how you um, what, you know your practices and what you're trying to implement at this time. Right. I know for one, for me, is I, I've started to wear these beta blocking glasses. And so just to try to do that so that I can start to help myself get to sleep, you mm -hmm. know, at a, at a appropriate time so that I can mm -hmm. have some consistency. Doing yeah. That. And that's yeah. been a big uh, help for me. Yeah, that's great. And so uh, those are wonderful things. And I think uh, Amy mentioned that there's going to be some uh, resources that we'll list uh, below. There's some local resources and then there's some um, uh, apps and then there's some other uh, websites that are going to be listed below uh, below in the video notes so that if you uh, want to continue or to, to dig a little deeper into some of the things that Amy was talking about, that you'll have those resources with you. And so thank you, Amy, thank for you. coming in this week. And I yeah, uh, really appreciate great. it. Thank you. Be well, everyone. Okay. And so we'll see you again soon. And uh, yeah, take care of yourself. Okay. Bye.